Hello all, thank you so much for joining uh, today. I hope you're enjoying the conference. And uh, for the today's session with me, uh, I'm going to talk about multi-tenant chatbots and what are the problems and uh, how we arrived at the solution. I hope you enjoy this. So a bit of an introduction about me. Uh, I'm a research engineer at Sama Technologies. Uh, we have the privilege of bringing machine learning slash deep learning into the uh, life sciences domain, uh, specifically for clinical trials and fastening the process. So as a part of that, we have an in-house chatbot platform. And uh, when we were building a chatbot for our, our SaaS project, we came across this problem I'm going to show you and how we solved it. I'm also a community activist. Uh, so I'm a part of Women Tech Makers Chennai. And uh, I also contribute a lot to open source, uh, primarily Rasa and uh, Python Pandas. So to summarize, I code, speak, write, read uh, everything about technology and also teach it. So my chatbot story started uh, when I started my career. So I directly became a chatbot developer because uh, we were a small team of uh, research engineers at a, a recruitment company. And uh, the first bot I ever built was an uh, interview bot, which uh, goes through the person's resume, filters it, and uh, gives the person uh, a filtering initial interview. And uh, as a result of that, you get uh, from 300 resumes, from the pile of 300 resumes, you get about 30 of them. So that, that was interview board. And uh, it was back in 2016 when chatbots were just starting up. So that was a very interesting experience. And we started sharing it with a lot of people. We started building communities and we ran bot sprints, bot workshops. We had a lot of fun doing that. And uh, as a result of that, when we were doing that, we had to be be on track, uh, always be on you know on the edge of what's changing in the technology, and that's how I found out Rasa. Uh, two thing I loved the most about Rasa back then was it's open source, so you can actually go and read the code. Second thing was the community. So this community had was like the best I ever worked with, and uh, so as a result, you know the curiosity kind of built up, and I went and. Uh, learned the Rasa's code and wrote some uh, blogs about it. And they just made me Rasa's superhero contributor. And I'm still associated with them, uh, uh, like giving this talk and uh, teaching people chatbot. Rasa is my first go-to thing. And all my chatbot journey uh, credits goes to Rasa. And uh, for today's talk, uh, what we're going to focus on is, as I told, like multi-tenant chatbots and how that influences uh, your chatbot development process. So to give you a bit of a context to put you in the shoes of this problem, I'm going to start with the very basics. Like, uh, so SaaS is the new normal, right? Every business wants to become a SaaS-based system. Every bus uh, business wants uh, to become a platform rather than a software or an application to use. And uh, companies are also, businesses are also adapting to this model and they are taking it beyond the conventional systems like CRM or uh, payroll management or procurement management. So it's going beyond and it's also entering very niche and very uh, complicated arenas like pharma, finance, banking sector. Uh, so these sector, why, what's so complicated about them are the data that we deal with in this case are very, very crucial. Uh, imagine you're going to a hospital, the patient a doctor confidentiality is very, very important. So the data that's at hand is very crucial and it's the uh, responsibility of the people who are building these SaaS, SaaS platforms to ensure that these are safeguarded. So. That's where the problem really starts. Uh, so a typical SaaS platform has this architecture where uh, let's say you have, you're building a hospital management system. Each hospital will have its own login and you have a centralized platform, but the, at the DB level, the databases, data of each hospital has aggregated. 
imagine this as a microservices architecture, right? So you have different DBs and you have different hospitals. So the data is completely residing in, in its own uh, places. Now coming to the machine learning world of it, when SaaS needs machine learning, how are we gonna ensure that the data stays in its own bucket? So uh, when SaaS needs ML, we, we I mean, thinking of having a centralized model because uh, we, no, no one wants to, you know, go ahead and train multiple models for each customer because we, we might be acquiring about thousands of customers. Nobody wants to train thousands of models. So then comes the question of, are we going to have a centralized model consuming all the data from these different databases? If we end up having a centralized model, then how are we going to ensure the data security part of it? So that's the key and that's the context behind this. And this SaaS plus ML problem also comes when we are building a uh, chatbot. So when we are building a chatbot, uh, we are going to talk about two things, right? Intent classification and an entity extraction. Um, so imagine for a, um, for a hospital management platform and we talk about intent classification, there are, uh, and it's an internal chatbot used by all the employees of a hospital. So uh, some common queries can go something like, you know, get me the details of a patient. Where is the patient from? What was the last drug that was uh, prescribed? So what was the recent condition the patient was uh, going through? All these kinds of questions. And this is common across all all the hospitals. So it's not going to be a big deal if we uh, expose these questions um, as an ML model. So this intent classification is already taken care of. So the problem really starts when we talk about entity extraction because this is the key that deals with the data of the uh, platform. So for example, some of the data on hospital management system will deal with our patient's name, what are the drugs prescribed, dates of visits, uh, address, what are the tests taken? What are the demographics? So uh, if there is any clinical trials, so all the confidential information resides in the entities. So when we train these uh, models, when we have one model for whole system, and when we train the system, there is a good chance that uh, we might be exposing some of this data. So the key here is we cannot expose any of this data. We cannot use it in the training example then how are we gonna achieve entity extraction? That was the problem at hand. So here are a few constraints. Uh, one, as I said, you can't use any of this data as your training data because it's highly confidential. You can't even expose something like a, a hospital name in your chatbots because it's completely decentralized. No two uh, customers should know about each other's data. And uh, retraining and prediction for new customers. If you think of having two models, right? Retraining and uh, bringing it all together is going to be very difficult. And third thing is how we're gonna uh, uh, achieve the data segregation that we uh, have in a microservices architecture. So here are some of the solutions that we considered. And I'll tell you what are the pros and cons. First, let's, let's go through the solution. And then we'll uh, talk about what are the constraints in each of the solutions. So the first one is the typical developer mindset where people say, you know, just go ahead and train the model. What's the big deal, right? And um, we also thought of, you know, having different models for different customers. So each customer will have their own model and that model will do the prediction for that particular customer. And, um, you know, uh, that first one is, for both intent and entities, the whole chatbot will have, it's typically having one chatbot for each customer. And the next idea was, you know, to less compl complicated, lesser. How about having uh, one model per entity extraction? Like entity extraction model alone will be customized for particular user. And the fourth one was federated learning. So we'll walk through each one of those and dissect it to see what the problem is, right? Uh, the first one was just train the model. And uh, the problem with that is it's it's extreme developer mindset. You know, what's the big deal without understanding the uh, 
business complications of it. Um, the, the audit will not go through. The data privacy breach cost you billions. And this is not at all a bait. It's a complete developer mindset, you know. Uh, but in businesses, this is not acceptable. And uh, the next solution we had at hand was, you know, just, uh, sorry, a uh, different model per customer. It's typically like building a different chatbot for different customers. And as we onboard new customers, we have to go and create a new chatbot, create a new intent extractor, create a new entity extractor. We should have logs for them. We should monitor all of them. We should deploy them. Think about the complexity we are going through with the solution. So this was uh, something we cannot take at hand because it's not going to work. The th second thing was a drill down. Next thing was a drill down version of it. Just have the entity extractor alone segregated. Again, we are dealing with the same set of problem because uh, we'll be needing to customize these models pertaining to the specific users. So every time a user subscribes to the SaaS platform, uh, yeah, you have to wait for him to accumulate data. And then uh, once the data is in place, you have to pull that and train it. So the kind of onboarding we are expecting uh, the users to do to start using the application right from day one is kind of taken aback, right? So that was all the problems with having entity extractor as a separate model for each, each customer. So the next thing was, uh, regex uh, again uh, if you have maintained regex in production uh, i would suggest don't because uh, it, it's very hard to maintain and uh, again regex has the problem of how do you customize it to specific users we still used it in the final solution but uh, it has a very unique purpose to it and uh, i'll tell you that why but uh, regex for everything like figuring out everything might not be an option so the next thing that we considered was federated learning. And this was top notch. The moment I saw how federated learning works, I was sold. Because that's exactly what we were looking for. We need a distributed training methodology where one master takes care of uh, training in clusters. And each uh, node on the cluster will have the data segregation we are looking for, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so that is the exact solution we were looking for, but unfortunately, federated learning is not ready for production use. It's still in the research uh, world. And if you have experience of, you know, successfully deploying one in production, I would be happy to know about it, but as far as I read through about it, federated learning is the solution, but it's not ready for production. So that's the only reason why we didn't go the federated learning way. And finally, what did we settle for? What what are uh, what is the final solution? Yeah, of course, we had discarded every possible solution on the world, and we have to settle for something we need. At the end of the day, we need the SaaS platform. We need to settle the user and need something at hand, right? Again, to memorize you, in multi-tenant chatbots, we have entities. We can't expose one uh, customer's entity to another customer. So we need some kind of a solution to achieve this. And we have a solution or a hack. So this is what we did. So what happens, uh, what we call this is a dynamic entity extraction. There won't be a model training at all, okay? So what happens is uh, for some entities, we use regex. For example, this can be a primary key in your database or some of the foreign key, right? So all the key-based things we use regex because it's generated by the system. So that's taken care of. Second thing was you have a map of all the keywords of a particular database built. So with this built uh, word vectors or uh, graph, we kind of do a diff match on a given entity. And to find out this entity, there is a training uh, model which has done with, uh, which has been trained with dummy data. So 
instead of giving a real person's name you give some random name and tag it as name and the model still predicts it to some level because it's typically pattern matching right so training the model with dummy data you know instead of giving actual data and then having this map of all the words that we are dealing with and doing a differentiation between the words and finally the regex based thing and each the last point is very important each entity that is being recognized should be cross checked to ensure that the particular entity belongs to the particular tenant of the particular user so the user is going to be the one who is interacting and the entity that is uh, let's say uh, the patient name we have to cross check whether the patient name that is being recognized by the model or by the so by the piece of code has is exactly the same as the one that's resided in our database so that is the key and crucial without that we can't ensure that the data privacy has been achieved we can't like we can do any kind of checks in your backend system just that you should expose it so that check ensure that the data is not exposed outside of the tenant's domain so a typical flow would look like this we do the typical pre processing of the text you know split that into sentences convert that into you know do a spell check remove punctuations all the pre processing and then you feed it into either the regex or diff or the entity uh, with dummy models you feed it to all of them pick the best of the three and then uh, do the tenant level authorization like check cross check over the db to ensure that you know all the the data belongs to the particular tenant and at the end of it we have the entity so to summarize um yes we had the problem of you know how do you ensure the data is data is data how do you ensure data privacy in a multi tenant system uh, microservices are very good at achieving it when it comes to machine learning how are we going to achieve it and when it comes to chatbots the problem hits you when you are doing an entity based system when you are doing entity extraction and federated learning would have been top notch but as until it hits the market until it it's coming to coming into platforms like rasa uh, we have to wait and see how this evolves and have you ever had such experiences with multi tenant chatbots i would love to discuss with you and see what you have gone through and what you have achieved I hope this session was informative and you learned a lot. Uh, thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you want to reach out, uh, Bhavani Ravi dot com. From there, you can find my LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, and that's where I live most of the time. So see you all there. Thank you so much.